All right, hey. All right. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on K-Tech and also available uh, streaming on YouTube as well. Uh, it's interview time once again, and uh, boy, do I have a very special guest with me. If you guys are big on sitcoms or big on television or just uh, classic, classic uh, television itself, uh, then you might know my next guest. Uh uh, he has uh, had a successful career basically as a character actor in ver- a variety of uh, well-known television shows. Uh, what comes to mind for me is like Everybody Loves Raymond as Cousin Gerard. You know, who can forget that? As well as uh, a couple episodes of Seinfeld that he uh, uh, he wrote. And also, I believe, I don't, you, you, believe, uh, you uh, made a couple appearances on Seinfeld too, didn't you? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> anyway, his name is Fred Stoller, or Stoller, I believe. Am I saying that right? Stoller, Stoller. You're you're saying it. Uh, Stoller is the Stoller. correct way. Yes, okay. Stoller. And he uh, last year, almost about a year ago, he wrote a uh, released a book called "Maybe We'll Have You Back: The Life of a Perennial TV Guest Star." Well, Mr. Fred Stoller, welcome to the Frankie Slauson Show, and uh, it's an honor to be able to talk to you. Oh, uh, my honor, too. Uh, you know, just uh, hope I can uh, merit that big intro. <laughs> well, well, I, <laughs> hope, uh, I, I, I think you, I, th- I definitely think you can, because uh, uh, while people might not remember, might not know who I'm talking about. When, when, when or they talking, may not know how to pronounce the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just kind of, it's just kind of cool just because of the fact that, You've had such a great career, you know, as in, in, in comedy as well as doing sitcoms, uh, and, and plus uh, some movie roles, some no, notable movie roles that you've done. I mean, it. Uh, uh, what have you been up to lately? Um, you know, I'm still pushing the book. I, I like doing book events. I got one coming up uh, next Saturday. There's actually a thing I didn't know called the Jewish Book Festival. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I'm still doing guest spots. I did a part on anger management. I got to meet Charlie Sheen and do a scene with him. And I got to say, it was a lot of fun. We were quoting lines from his favorite movie, Apocalypse Now, and one of my favorite movies. So um, I just did a little part in a, a kid show called Haunted Hathaways and some voiceovers. So I just like doing a little bit of everything, pushing the book, doing a guest spot. And I'm writing another book, and just uh, performing wherever they want me. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, you, you you got a pretty good uh, pretty good career, I'd say. Uh, being able to to do voiceover work and, and uh, television acting. I mean, uh, does it ever get tiring, or, or or is this something that you always wanted to do your entire life? Well, the tiring part sometimes comes, you know, uh, auditioning, paddle calls. Where I'm going, come on, do I have to audition for this guy I already worked for, for this little part? You know what I mean? So sometimes uh, I get lucky where they go, we, either they want me or they don't. They know, we, they say, we don't have to bring Fred in for an audition. So sometimes the tiring part is just the politics and some, you know, nonsense with show business. You know, the backstabbing, the meanness of some other acts, or some actors or just just uh just that's the only part that gets tiring or just the uh living and dying by the you know, your credit and wanting to get the next job so sometimes it's, you know it'd be nice to be a human being and take a vacation and not be nervous and missing out on something so just uh just they always well that's what my book's about you know i've been on all these shows but i'm still i've never been a regular uh, so i just trying to find a comfort zone you know not the desperation gets a little bit much yeah I, i'd say so i mean i, I would figure by now with, with all the stuff that you've done a person would look at that and say you know what he's got a hell of a resume we gotta get him his own show you know we gotta we gotta get him a show <laughs> on cbs or something you know <laughs> you would you would think you know yeah the, the, the probably the biggest uh, the problem is self-inflicted, me beating myself up, going, why don't I have my own show? What am I doing wrong? What do I do? So, you know, I, I learned not to 
you know, some people beat themselves up. Like this woman I know, she she does so great in acting class, and people need to see me. Why can't I, you know, um, people see what I do, and why, you know, so you can't really analyze it, go, why is it not more than it is, so why aren't I, you know, things further along, so... The, you know, you just, you know, my, my philosophy is um, some things come my way, go my way, most don't, you know, but you appreciate the little, little things. Like, I had a little part with Charlie Sheen, and it was fun. I didn't have to audition, you, a late call time, or not, there's nice food. So I, I, I learned to just appreciate the little, little things, you know. Well, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of a nice way to be because you know a lot of a lot of big celebrities, you know, are always you know, I don't know, they're they're, they're I don't know if it's more about the money that they they uh, they love or the fame or whatever, but at least you at least you sound like a pretty down to earth guy anyway. Well, thank you. you know a lot a lot of people lose perspective. Like I said, they you know, and it's hard. Even me, uh, you know, you you look at the you know, the TV guy or the, you know, New Entertainment Weekly and this guy's on this show and he's not funny or you see on Facebook all your friends are bragging about the shows they're on. So sometimes, you know, I go, wait a minute, how come I never did that? But then you pull yourself back down and go, you forget about the real world where people are really struggling and, you know, or, you know, just even like a, I, I was on a show last night, no one heard of probably Haunted Hathaway's, but people, you know, would tell just have one line on a show. So, you know, we all have our moments of losing a little bit of rational thought or perspective, but you got to bring it back down. You know, uh, uh, how I kind of discovered you in the first place, I mean, I've always, I've always known about your work and stuff, and I've always been a big fan of the, of the character actor. I think the character actor, to me, is, it does a better job than, than most of the main actors or actresses in the show. But uh, how I discovered you was uh, I saw a, a video you did with uh, one of your good friends, Eddie Deason, who I had a chance to Oh! Interview. Yeah. Who I had <laughs> That's a chance so to, funny. Yeah. I had a chance to interview him last year, and uh, he was uh, definitely quite the card. But I saw a video that you guys did on YouTube uh, uh, before I did the interview with him, and I just thought, you know, i got to add this. i got to add Fred as a friend and, uh, on Facebook and see uh, – you know, ho- hopefully he's re- you know really who he says he is. Hopefully he you know he has access to his own Facebook because I know some people who are big names you know in the business have their agents or somebody take over their Facebook. So you know. I don't consider myself a big name, <laughs> but thank you. Um, you know, Eddie, I always bump into the farmers market. That's where I did that little video, and he yeah he's like the old fashioned character actor and. Uh, He's a real into trivia and the Beatles and baseball, so he's quite a character. And we did an animation show a long time ago called um, Oswald the Octopus. Huh. So that was fun working with him. You got a lot of close friends that you're uh, really close with in the business. Are you and Ray Romano really good friends or, or more business friends? You know, we're friendly. I wouldn't say, we don't really hang out, you know. Um, uh, but he did a favor for me, and he wrote the forward to my book. Um, I don't know if you, you read my book, maybe we'll have you back, yeah, or yeah. know about it. Yeah, I yeah know. he did the forward to it. So, um, at, you know, uh, you know uh, my friends, uh, you know, Chris Rock's a great guy. I checked the Artie Lang on the phone. He's um, a cool guy. Do you know who Dom Herrera is? Uh, I'm not, I don't think I do. I'm not too sure. I don't think I do. He's a character. He's a he's a comedian. So it's uh you know, but you know, I don't I don't hang out at parties or big showbiz people. I just uh, pretty much a loner. And um, but uh, you know, so you, sometimes you just enjoy bumping into someone that you've worked with and catching up. So that's what I do at the farmers market. You know. So you you never been married, never had no kids or nothing that you know of at all? <laughs> Just uh, two cats. I lost one cat. He was 18. So uh, uh, no no marriage, no. Oh, 
Because, I mean, you seem like, I, I've seen some of your older pictures from back in the day, from way back in the day, like you posted on Facebook or you were tagged on Facebook or however that works anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know why uh, no girl would want to want to spend some time with you. I mean, you seem like a pretty good-looking guy, especially, ba- especially back in those days when you were just getting started. I mean, good good Lord there. Oh, uh, thank you. I, didn't, I guess I didn't have good self-esteem. People told me I was too skinny, and I never let that go. But, uh, you know, it could be worse. I uh, just have a lot of neuroses, but I'm learning to be better accepting. So, so it's almost like, uh, like, like, like when you picture it, it's like the the the, you, the character uh, Gerard is almost. I mean, you're not nearly like the Gerard character. Not but, quite but, like that. I'm a little exaggerated, <laughs> but you know, but, I'm not quite that bad. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of, it's just kind of funny, I guess. Uh, when you think about it, just because uh, uh, the the cousin Gerard character is like definitely way worse, obviously. But but you definitely, you know, people need to realize that's just a character you play. That's not the re- the way. Yeah, I, get, I exaggerated a little. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's you know what are you going to do? Like uh, it comes. You know what? It, sometimes I have auditions. They say not so pathetic when I'm being myself. So uh, sometimes it comes naturally, naturally to me. Uh, unfortunately, in the sad side. Yeah. But you know, it's uh, fun doing it when people appreciate it. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Uh, recently on Netflix, I watched a, a show called Till Death. It's kind of funny because of the fact that ever since Everybody Loves Raymond went off the air, as far as uh, for new episodes, even though they're running, you know, they're pretty good at reruns. Uh, uh, both Ray Romano and uh, uh, Brad Garrett, and even uh, Deb, Deb, you know, or Patricia Heaton, uh, did uh, went their own ways and did some more sitcoms. And you did a guest appearance on an uh, episode of Till Death. I thought was pretty uh, hilarious from from a few years back. Wait, I'm confused. What was the show? Uh, Till Death with Brad. Yes, Garrett. I did a little part on that. Yeah. See Brad that? Garrett requested me, so that's really nice when people you worked for in the past request you from other work. Oh yeah, and see, I remember stuff like that. You, I mean, that's why I probably surprised you. Like, like, wait, wait, what character did I play? What did I do this? Because um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I just noticed little things like that. I just watched that episode here probably about a month ago on Netflix, and uh, you know, just but, the little parts, yeah. yeah. But those little parts to me make a big difference, and uh, and I, you know, like it, like we were talking about before, uh, it it, uh, it it should have built a, a bigger career for you, and I I'm just I'm just so surprised why it never did, you know. I mean, it still could, but you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I I, I would. I wish that we could see you like in, in a main role as like a big movie star. Like even if it's just a one movie, it could be like the most funniest movie you could ever do. You know, and you know uh, that would be hilarious. There's, there's um, well, check out Fred and Vinny on Netflix. It's a movie I did where it's it's I'm playing more myself. It's autobiographical, and um, I, I'm the star of it. I, I'm not like a a macho guy or anything, but, uh, um, it, yeah, it was a lot of fun playing myself. Sure. I'm sure it was, you know, and, and that's all, that was more like a, more of an independent role kind of too, I suppose, huh? In that type of movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, uh, I wasn't as like Cousin Gerard, I was more myself. Yeah. But it was more like, you a, know, but it's more independent for people who have never heard of it. As far as yes, that goes. yes, it was in film festivals, Austin Film Festival. We won a prize there. Um, Slam Dance in Park City, Utah. So uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Oh, well, that's cool. That, 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 uh, what's kind of the premise of the of the of the movie? I mean, what's it about? What was it? Well, basically, I'm playing myself, <laughs> and it's based on a true story where. Uh, this guy was agoraphobic. He didn't like to go outside, but he was like the adoring parent I never had. So he lived vicariously through me. You know, he thought it was a big deal if I went to the video store or the post office. He'd go, get out. No way, man. So he was like almost like a long distance relationship because I'd love calling him up, telling him these things that he thought was so exciting. And, but then it turns out that he wanted to come to LA and try to, you know, 
be um, uh, an an extra, and uh, and then he wanted to stay with me, and it was kind of a nightmare. So it's kind of a funny, sad, interesting story. Would Would you uh, compare it to uh, the hit Bill Murray film, uh, One Ball Bob, kind of? In a way. Um. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. not as over the top. This is very character driven and real. That's really broad. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, just because of the story, more or less, because you, a lot of the stuff that you talk that you just said uh, about it almost sounds similar to uh, to the character that uh, Bill Murray played, uh, Bob Wiley, who's kind of a kind of a has all these symptoms, so to speak, that he just you know makes up on the top of his head, and you know goes out to see his doctor and all that stuff. And everybody's seen the movie. What about Bob? And if you, and if you haven't, well, where the hell you been? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I think you'll like it. Uh, yeah, I think you'll like it if you like character actors. Fred Willard, Fred Willard's a good friend. I forgot he did a small part in it, and uh, it's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff about the character acting world. Sure, and, and uh, let's talk about your book now because uh, that's kind of the the premise to why I want to interview you too. I'm not a big book reader myself, but uh, I, I downloaded the. Uh, it was available on Audible dot com as a uh, audio book, and I really like the audio book format. Uh, I like the oh, old fashioned book too, but I like the audio book format more just because I like it when somebody can more or less read to you more or less. And I know that sounds like a first grade type of thing, but that's just oh, I, I like it. a lot of audio books too. <laughs> it just uh, it makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what were, uh, what kind of inspired you to finally just say, I'm going to write a book about everything that I've done as far as the sitcoms go? Well, a few things. First of all, I, I realized I had an interesting story to tell because, I, you know, I like, like, I like me, you know, like you with character actors, I like reading about these guys. There's so many books or stories about the lavish lifestyle of Brad Pitt or the big stars, George Clooney. But what's it like, you know, though I've never been a regular on one show, I thought it would be an interesting story, a guy that's passed through so many different shows and always a traveling. There was a basketball player, I forgot his name, um, who was on so many different teams. And, and I thought that'd be a good book because, you know, he's a guy that's, you know, never feeling secure but had lots of different adventures. So I said, you know, uh, and I like hearing about the basketball players that are always in the minor leagues and trying to come up and, and get, you know, so I thought this would be interesting. The guy, and I always had the title, maybe we'll have you back because that's what you hope they say, the guy that goes from one show to another. So I, I, I've been writing it little by little, and there's a whole chapter about being a writer on Seinfeld and dealing with Larry David. So it just was fun after... Uh, love being on all these shows, but here I get to tell my own story rather than fitting it to someone else's puzzle. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. And, and, and it just seems like a, you know, an, an interesting uh, way to kind of look back at your, at your life, even though your life's not over yet. I mean, you know, you might be in your uh, mid to late 50s, but, but in some ways your life can say it's almost like a, a second chapter, so to speak. You know, you get, you're still... Yeah, you're exactly. Still, yeah. yeah. Good, good way to look at it. Yeah. You're you're still in the business. You haven't retired or nothing. Most people, you know, they wait until they're like retired to write a book. But but you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it. You know, while you're still in the business, and, and I think that's great because, uh, you know, you said you're 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 thinking about writing another one, or you are writing another one. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing another one. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, and, and I I just think that uh, I think that's just kind of neat because. Uh, uh, even though, uh, since I'm going to ask you this question, since you said it's okay, and like I said before, I don't normally like to get sure, too personal, sure. but uh, currently, right now, you're going, you're uh, in some type of le- legal bind or something with a guy named Kenny Kramer. Want to explain? Well, that? I wrote about him, about an experience. It's a comedic book, and uh, I he got really angry when um, he uh, I wrote. Just Mike, you're allowed to have your opinion, and uh, he kind of made up the defamation, which it's not. You know, he, he he twisted the words to make up a lawsuit, so it's a, a little of annoyance. But we're pretty confident once the judge looks at it, they're going to go, "What? That's there's nothing illegal about what I wrote." 
So it just, you know, uh, some people like Kathy Griffin, I, I wrote about having a one night stand with her and she loved it. I, I wrote about, uh, Norm MacDonald busting my chops on the set. He thought it was fun. So, you know, so basically that's going to happen and it's an experience, but so many people have been supportive and, you know, just, uh, we had a fundraiser for the legal fees at a comedy club, and people were so supportive. So it, it's a nuisance, but I have no regrets writing the book. Well, yeah, and, and you shouldn't. I mean, and it's just kind of sad that somebody would like to you know, almost take advantage of you and, and your success uh, by kind of almost demolishing what you've done. And, and it feels like a slap in the face I'm, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it is, but like I say, I look at the positive, all the outpouring of support and friends showing up for my benefit and helping me out. So sure. it's just, uh, you know, it's uh, people have in their mind something they think or something. So it's a nuisance, but it'll be over soon. And then you'll be able to move on and life will continue as, as it normally exactly. does. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, other than that, uh, it's 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 uh, it's just kind of neat to know that you're very optimistic about everything. Uh, when you uh, started back in your early days, uh, what kind of inspired you to be kind of a, to start off uh, to be in a stand-up comic? You know, I wasn't a funny guy; I wasn't a class clown. But uh, I um, I just was. Uh, I, I saw it as a way to be a character actor. If you I thought if you do just said at a comedy club, I'd get discovered and and be on a, you know. So I, it just was a way in, I thought, to try to uh, become a character actor. Just uh, I thought all you had to do was get on a, a TV show. I mean, uh, do your act and you'd get to be on a, you know, yeah. a sitcom. Sure. But yeah, I, I you know, that's, uh, I, I suppose in every young man or woman's uh, uh, personal thing, if, if they, they think that's the easiest way, hell, I thought being on YouTube and, and being on the radio uh, would uh, get me superstar too, at one time. But then I realized, you know, it's a lot of work, first of all, and only a few get selected. And sometimes it sucks because, you know, you think nobody cares about what you do, but then, then you got to realize all the stuff that you've accomplished. If anything, yeah, and you appreciate the people that appreciate you. You know, yeah, it's uh, and you got to you got to love what you do. So that's the main thing. You just got to if you enjoy it, that's a success. Yeah, that that'll be your your true uh, secret to success. Because a lot of people always want to know what the secret to success is. Well, I think we just said it. <laughs> love what you do. You know, don't worry about so much about being rich and famous because. Some people are born with that talent, you know, and I'm surprised a lot of, even like Justin Bieber, for example, you know, and I'm not a huge fan of Justin Bieber, but, you know, he, he's a guy who's, who let fame get to his head, and now look where he's at, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, uh, I, I, I worked with Selena Gomez when I was on Wizards of Waverly Place, so she was really down to earth. Yeah, and I'm sure Justin's probably down to earth, too, but... Uh, but now, when it's, since he's like, you know, uh, he always trends worldwide on Twitter, uh, Twitter, and he's like always, he's always going to be famous. They almost treat him like he's the next uh, Michael Jackson almost, or Elvis Presley. Yeah, except I'm old. I'm not too familiar with his music. <laughs> I, I don't follow a lot of these young people that are, I don't know any uh, Taylor Swift songs, yeah. What do you, uh, you know. yeah? What do you normally listen to for music? I mean, since we're bringing it up, what what's your what's more your style? Classic rock, um, uh, Rat Pack, Sinatra. I like I like almost everything. Of the, yeah, you two, uh, Springsteen, Neil Young, a little bit of everything. Do you go as far back as like to to Buddy Holly at all, or or is that too old for you? Yeah, <laughs> no, I listen to some of that. It's, wow, God! Well, I wish I could have done Skype. I, speak, you know, I yeah. had some computer problems. Being one of them, I'm gonna right now drop it off. Sure. You know, my computer, so I got to get going for that. But any other final questions? Uh, no, uh, I just want to say uh, thanks uh, to you personally uh, for me just because this has been a, uh, a fun interview, and I really do appreciate the fact that uh, you let me talk to you. You know, it's a really nice. Mm -hmm. 
Well, my pr pleasure, and maybe when I get the computer fixed at some point, I'll figure out how to do Skype. Yeah, and if you ever need help on how to show uh, how to do it, I can always, uh, you know, they've updated it so many different times, so if you ever have a question, I can always help you with it. Oh, thank you so much, and again, um, thank you for being a fan. I appreciate all the support, and just keep uh, keep me in touch. Oh, I will. You know I will. <laughs> Thanks again, Fred. Uh, uh, I thank appreciate. you. Have a great day. Yeah, you too, man. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. And that was the legendary Fred Stoller, uh, Mr. Character Actor, as we call him in the in the business. But uh, another great interview. Uh, my fourth inter new interview for the month of April, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. we got more to come here on KTEC. Uh, keep it locked up here with myself and old Reb. We'll be back playing some more great tunes and just having a great old time, bringing back the old days of classic radio and the fun days of what radio used to be. Right here on the all-new Frankie Slauson Show on KTEC. At 91.3 FM, as well as YouTube. <laughs>